Tesla is gonna have a tough time ahead of them when it comes to servicing all of these new Model 3s. So I wanted to dig into some of this data and try to see what they're doing and if they're gonna be able to handle it. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm Ben Sullins and this is Teslanomics where we decode the data behind Tesla. Each week, what I do is I find some data and some question that you have or others have been asking me and I try to dig into it and see what the data really shows. So forget all the appeal and the flashiness, of course, Teslas are incredibly sexy and it's fun to look at that stuff. But here on this channel, we pay more closer attention to the facts and the figures and we try to do it in a fun and engaging way. So if you're new here, I'd love for you to join us. Click subscribe, it won't cost you a Thing, and you can unsubscribe at any time. Also at teslanomics.co, you can sign up and get all of these plus all the other deals and things we're doing direct to your inbox. So I hope to see you there and let's dive into the data now. So when I first started looking at this, what I wanted to do was find out where are the service centers. So I went to tesla.com and I found that there's actually a map of them and you can see that here. So with this map, I can look at stores, galleries, superchargers, etc. but service centers is what I was interested in. And you can see there's actually big chunks chunks of the United States here that don't have any service centers. Now, if I want, I can find a different location. Maybe let's go to Spain, one of my favorite countries. And hello to Spain if you guys are watching. And you can see, yeah, there's <laughs> there's not much going on here. Looks like, um, I don't know why it put me on France. Yeah, so there aren't any service centers in Spain according to this. That sucks, um, and that's gonna be a challenge for already existing owners. But of course, this map here doesn't tell us the whole story, so I wanted to dig a little deeper, as I often do. And what I found on Tesla Motors Club, the forum where tons of owners and enthusiasts uh, like you and me are sharing information and having good discussions about a lot of people there were talking about this already, and one user in particular, the same one that gave us the data about the supercharger stats, gave us some data here about historical tracking for service centers. So this comes from a Google Sheet that he shared with me, and you can see that he's just updated it recently for Q1 of 2017, so it's perfect timing here to take a look at this. Now, um, what he's trying to do here, similar to the supercharger analysis, is look at the Tesla fleet, all of the cars that are there, plus the number of service centers, and find out what the ratio is, the number of service centers to Tesla cars. Now, of course, at the global scale, just like superchargers, it doesn't really mean anything because who cares if there's a bazillion service centers in one part of the world if I live across an entire ocean? It doesn't mean anything to me. So we have to we have to focus this data in. We actually have to kind of um, localize it so that it makes sense. So in his analysis, he has some really good tables here where he explains the Tesla fleet, how it's growing, as well as each different country and what the ratios are there and kind of color coding it. So I'll put a link to this spreadsheet here and the forum thread on Tesla Motors Club. Um, if you want to go get more involved or check these numbers or even contribute to it. So you can check that out in the description down below. Now, what I had to do was to actually parse this data a bit. So when I'm looking at this data, I had to actually pull it into a single sheet. And maybe I can make this a little bit bigger for you so you can see it. So basically I have the region, the measure, whether it's the Tesla fleet, the service centers, or the ratio itself. And then going from left to right, I have all of the different quarters. So this is measured quarterly, or at least what this user has been doing was collecting these numbers every quarter. Remember, Tesla doesn't actually publish these numbers, but on the Tesla Motors forum, you'll actually see where he gets the data from. So it's all legit and you can double check it and, and dig in really deep if you want to. So what's going on here is this data I had to actually put into this format in order to then analyze it and visualize it. So this gave us this historical view and that's helpful because it really tells a much more richer picture. Let's take a look. First, the thing I did was I wanted to see how are they growing and what you're seeing here on top are the service centers, the number of service centers, and on the bottom, the fleet, how many cars there are. And it's color coded here by the actual country or the region, um, not always a country, but you guys see global USA. And this chart, without being too detailed, it's actually not that useful, but it did show, at least at the global level, just the trend there of how those things are going up versus the service centers are pretty flat. Now, 
you may be asking yourself, okay, well that's nice, but let's look at the growth. Let's actually look at the change because that's kind of more important. Now, if I do that, I'll go to my comparison tab here and this data and these charts and everything are available at teslanomics.co as well as if you're on the email list, it'll be sent to you directly. And you can actually download this stuff and play with it on your own computer if you want to. But this chart here is the service center to fleet comparison. On top, what we have are the growth comparisons. So the orange line is the the Tesla fleet and it's going up and down because it's the growth. It's not just a cumulative number that keeps going up and up. That's not helpful. It doesn't really tell us what's going on. Then the bottom number is the number of service centers and you can see how that changes as well. Now in general, they actually correlate pretty well. The fleet as the growth slows on that, so does the growth on the service centers. Now granted, service centers are a bit harder to plan, right? I can pump out a car in a manufactory. I can't really do that in a service center. There's leases, you have to hire people and ship things there. Whole different ball game. But you can see it actually correlates and trends fairly well. Now in Q1 of 2017, the good news so far is that they're actually bumping it up. You can see the service centers just jumped globally in terms of the growth and the number of them. Now the way this works, and I like to make every one of these interactive for you, is you can choose which region you're actually interested in on the right side. So if I lived in Canada, I can go click on Canada and I can see there I had very little or four service centers overall and boom, now I have five, so I have this big spike. Yeah, it's only one, I know, but you can select each different region. Let's go to the United States where I know we have a lot. And it updates both charts. The top one there is that comparison and the bottom is the ratio. So on the bottom, you're seeing that ratio of the number of Tesla cars to service centers. Uh, you can see we're up to about 1,841, but honestly, this curve is pretty mellow. It's not super steep. What's gonna happen when the Model 3 comes is a whole different ball game. Uh, I'm definitely gonna keep tabs on this as that happens and update these things and, and, and revisit them because for owners like myself and like you, or maybe if you're a potential owner, this is something that you're gonna wanna, wanna be aware of. Now time out from the data for a second. I've had two issues with mine and I had the windshield wiper that was broken, if you remember that video, and I also had a battery replaced. The reason this is relevant is because both of those were free, first off, but they came to my house to perform them. I have video for it, I'm not lying about that. They actually come to your house. And in fact, if we take a look at the transcript from the recent earnings call, what you'll see is that they actually address this and this is part of the plan. This is how they're gonna handle it. I think it's brilliant. So let me just read this to you from them. It says, ahead of the Model 3 launch, we are re-engineering and expanding our operations as we anticipate the needs of a much larger family of Tesla owners. In service, since more than 80% of our repairs are so minor that they can be done remotely, we are expanding our mobile repair service that allows Tesla to make vehicle repairs at an owner's home or office. In February, we opened 168,000 thousand square foot vehicle delivery center in Hong Kong and we plan to accelerate expansion of the supercharger network this year starting with doubling our number of North American supercharger locations in 2017. So I agree with this. This makes sense and it isn't reflected in our data. So that's why I wanted to take a time out there because while we look at this data, what we're looking at are service centers and the service centers themselves don't necessarily address this mobile fleet. Now, I don't know, I assume that the mobile fleet has a home base where they can go to and that may be classified as a service center, but it may not be. They may, act, may actually have a kind of behind the scenes place where people cannot go, but it's just for them to launch out of, you know, park their vehicles and that kind of thing. So. I think this strategy is brilliant. I agree with it because I understand it from my own personal experience. Um, and I think, you know, if we look at the jobs and what they're actually doing, it's true. So that was my next thought here was let's dig in and see, well, are they actually hiring? And in fact, they are. If you go to tesla.com and you take a look at the careers section, what you can do is you can actually see the, all the service jobs and it is pretty exhaustive. Uh, it's quite long. <laughs> so rather than have you go through all those yourself, I did what I do and I, I parsed it out for you. So first, I wanted to look at the most popular locations for service jobs. Well, no surprise, Fremont, California, the headquarters is where they are. And there's currently 73 postings as of this recording. Now that may change, maybe it's one of you. 
But as you see, as you go down, these are pretty worldwide. There's even remote work locations, 15 jobs currently in the service industry. And as you go down, you can see there's even things like remote work location, which are in the service category. So there may be some of those folks in there. Now you can dig in and see the job titles and filter all that on their website. You can go do all that. But you can just see that there are a ton of jobs that are hiring a lot here. Um, and in fact, if I go, I actually made a map of this as well. And so you can see a map of where they all are. Uh, for a lot of these, I actually had to go find the latitude, longitude of every little dot. So if you're near one of those little dots that is not in a big city and, and you're on this map, let me know because, um, I don't know, thank you for, for joining joining us and uh, I'm excited that you know my little bit of work I put in there uh, meant something to you. But you can see here, so in this map, the way it works is I can actually filter it. So let's say I wanna go to look at Europe. Cool, so now I have Europe, maybe I wanna see, okay, well, let's go back to Spain. All right, and we've got a few options here. There's one in Portugal and Lisbon, there's three jobs in Madrid, and there's two jobs in Barcelona, all wonderful cities that I would love to work in um, and live in, so there's that. But this map is gonna help you, I guess, just check this out. And really, the whole point of this was to emphasize again that Tesla is doing a lot and you can see that from the service center spike globally as well as a lot of the different regions. And this data I think is even more telling because we may not know about all the different rangers and people that are doing this work because all we're looking at are the service center numbers. So there you have it. Tesla's doing quite a bit here to prepare for the Model 3 to land. And I think they're really focusing on it. They understand that it's a whole ecosystem. It's not just the product itself. But I wanna know, is it gonna be enough? What do you think? Do you think that all the efforts here, the service center expansion, the doubling of the super, is it really 400,000 cars is a lot? And if you are a current owner, I'd love to know what your experience has been. Um, for me, it's all been remote. I know that there are some horror stories out there, as you can imagine with any uh, any manufacturer, um, but I just would love to, to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. And, and if you're not already, uh, you can check us out on Patreon as well, where we have a much more direct relationship. So uh, you can go to patreon.com slash teslanomics and learn more about that there. And for those of you that aren't on our email list, uh, please go to teslanomics.co and do that. You'll get things like a thousand bucks off a Tesla, uh, um, upcoming eBooks, t-shirts, all kinds of fun stuff. And it's just an easier way. So you don't have to keep coming back and forth between YouTube. It just comes direct to you uh, whenever we publish stuff. So thanks for joining me again, and I will see you back here next time.